I wrecked my tank. First off, no you didn't. I know dinoflagellates are one of the most frustrating pests in reef keeping. They look terrible, they suffocate corals, they can be quite toxic and wipe out your cleanup crew, and worst of all, they hit newer reefers more often than not because they show up in newly set up aquariums. Not to mention that they can be extremely difficult to beat if you don't have any experience dealing with them. And when you look around for info on dinos, one of the first things you're told to do is to look at them under a microscope to figure out which type of dino you have. But that can also be confusing if you don't know exactly what you're looking for and you just want them gone. Good news! The reality is that you don't need to ID your dino flagellates under a microscope in order to beat them. And in this video, I'm going to show you a method that you can use to beat just about any kind of dino flagellate that could end up in your reef tank, whether it's free floating or sand dwelling or stuck to your rocks. Basically, it's just easier to assume the worst case scenario and then come at them from all angles. So don't panic, you can win this fight. And the best part, if you follow these steps, you're not only gonna get rid of them, but you're gonna make sure that they never come back. But first things first, what are dinoflagellates? Dinoflagellates are a group of planktonic microorganisms that can be both photosynthetic and heterotrophic, meaning they can make their own food from light and consume organics. There are thousands of species in the ocean and some are even beneficial. However, the type of dinos we see in our aquariums are a menace, covering the rock and sand beds, smothering corals, and some species are capable of producing toxins that can kill invertebrates and even other microbes. And because dinos are so resilient, traditional algae control methods don't often work and can sometimes make things even worse. But the first thing we need to answer is, is it actually dinos? One of the biggest mistakes reefers make is misidentifying dinos because they can look very similar to diatoms, but there are key differences you can use to tell them apart. With the naked eye, diatoms are typically brown, dusty, and coat surfaces evenly. They're easy to remove by blowing them off with a turkey baster or a siphon. Dinos are slimy, stringy, and often contain tiny bubbles trapped inside their strands, especially during the hours that your lights are on. They tend to react when disturbed, but come back quickly overnight. Under a microscope, if you have one, diatoms have rigid geometric silica-based shells that look like structured plates or boxes. Dinos, on the other hand, are often like small brown spheres or ovals. Some are even more irregularly shaped, and they're often moving or swimming around erratically under magnification. And something I should really mention is that there is no way to avoid getting dinoflagellates in your aquarium system. They will get in there one way or another, whether it's on your rock or sand or the addition of fish, coral, snails, or other invertebrates, they will get in your aquarium. So don't blame yourself. This isn't a pest you can easily prevent. You didn't do anything wrong here. Dinos actually exist in virtually every saltwater tank in small amounts. The problem starts when the population explodes and they start to take over, which usually happens when the microbiome is out of balance. Here's what makes a tank vulnerable to a dino outbreak. Ultra low nutrient levels, including undetectable nitrates and phosphates, a tank that's too clean gives dinos a competitive edge because they can survive in low nutrient environments better than other organisms, meaning they have no competition to keep them in check. A lack of biodiversity in the microbiome. Tanks without enough copepods, bacteria, and other competing microorganisms give dinos an open playing field to dominate. And drastic tank changes, large water changes, aggressive nutrient removal like running too much GFO, or overuse of UV sterilizers can destabilize the system and give dinos an opportunity to bloom. The good news is preventing these problems is pretty straightforward, even for a brand new reefer starting a brand new reef tank. Add copepods early on. Copepods are natural predators of certain types of dinos, and introducing a robust pod population early can help prevent outbreaks from ever occurring. We've actually put this to the test, and it works very reliably and incredibly well. Next, diversify your microbiome. Products like aquabiomics or Tampa Bay saltwater, live sand or rock, or ocean source bacteria can help keep dino populations in check. Finally, keep your nitrates and phosphates detectable. 
Contrary to what we used to believe, undetectable nutrients can make dinos much worse. Aiming for nitrates around 5 to 10 parts per million and phosphate between 0.02 and 0.06 parts per million keeps the microbiome balanced. Just doing those three things can prevent you from ever having to deal with a major dinoflagellate outbreak. But I'm betting you're here because you already have a pretty substantial issue with dinos. So without further ado, let's get to that no microscope needed five step solution for dealing with a dino disaster. Step one, check your nutrients. Test both nitrate and phosphate. If you find that they're critically low, especially double zeros, you're going to need to raise them to healthy levels right around five to 10 ppm for nitrate and 0.02 to 0.06 ppm for phosphate. This is high enough that other beneficial microbes will have the nutrients they need to thrive without being so high that other undesirable algaes or bacteria can easily take over. The easiest way to raise them is via liquid additives like Brightwell's NeoFos and NeoNitro, but it is also important not to go overboard with water changes and filtration while you're trying to raise your nutrients. So avoid doing unnecessarily large water changes, 10% weekly at most, and do not use carbon dosing products, whether that's a liquid additive or bio pellets. You can even go as far as to turn off your protein skimmer until you have your nutrients up where you need them. Step two, add competing organisms. With your nutrients in a healthy range, your aquarium's microbiome can now begin to fight back. To make sure there's enough healthy competition that can take over the resources that dinoflagellates were using to thrive, you can bolster that microbiome in a few different ways. First, you can add copious amounts of copepods. Algae Barnes Ecopods is a great option as it contains four different species to cover all your bases. If your outbreak is particularly awful, I'd recommend adding one 16 ounce jar of Ecopods for every 20 gallons of system volume and add them in the evening when the lights are off so that your fish are tucked away for the night so those pods have a chance to find shelter. Second, you can make sure you have enough beneficial bacteria in the system by adding cultures like Microbacter 7. If you've already done this, when you started up the aquarium, there is no harm at all in adding more. Thirdly, you can add a more diverse microbiome boosting product like Aquaforest Life Source or add some cultured live sand or rubble rock from Aquabiomics or Tampa Bay Saltwater. Ultimately, adding pods and boosting the microbiome is going to give your reef tank an army of dino destroyers. Step three, manually remove those dinos as often as possible to reduce the population rapidly and gain the upper hand. Removing the dinos yourself will dramatically reduce the population population and help your army gain its foothold. You can use a small siphon to remove them from the rocks and vacuum them from your sand bed, but make sure you only do small water changes during removal. You don't want to remove nutrients if they're low, so change out only the water required to manually remove the dinos. Alternatively, you can use a BRS media reactor with a 5 micron sediment filter like the RO-Save Z-Depth sediment filter right on the display tank, and then use a small pump to blow the dinos off the rock in the sand and up into the water column to remove Remove them without having to remove any water. Step four, pick up an appropriately sized UV sterilizer. They are incredibly effective on free floating dinos. These dinos still cover surfaces during the day, but will disappear at night as they break up into the water column. They'll end up passing through the UV sterilizer, which will effectively eliminate them. All UV sterilizers will have ratings for the size of the aquarium that they're meant for and the flow rating that's most effective. Pay very close attention to both and make sure that you match them up accordingly or you won't get the results that you're after. That being said, UV can make it difficult for other beneficial organisms to flourish, meaning it should be used until the dinos are dealt with and then retired. Once you're dinoflagellate free for a couple weeks, you can remove the sterilizer from the system. And step five, black out the tank for three to four days. This means no lights on the display or refugium and wrap the tank in something dark to prevent ambient light from getting into the aquarium. This does two things. It starves the photosynthetic dinos, causing them to have a major setback, which can help other competitive microbes get a foothold to outcompete them. And it can cause the dinos that prefer surfaces like the rock and sand bed to leave them and suspend themselves in the water column where the UV sterilizer is going to be effective at wiping them out. After the three or four days are done, you can go back to normal lighting for your tank and your refugium. And while your corals aren't going to be thrilled about it, they will be okay for a few days without light, so don't fret. Now, I know that was a lot of info, but if you apply it and you keep up with it, 
even if it doesn't happen immediately, you will be able to get ahead of this outbreak of dinos. And once you do, you're gonna feel like a million bucks and your tank will thank you for it, especially because you shouldn't ever have a dino flagellate outbreak again. But dinos probably won't be the only pest you face during your reefing journey. So if you wanna get ahead of the curve and avoid the other nasties, you can check out the rest of the Help I Wrecked My Tank series right here.